Hey guys, so the last presentation of the day will be about the anatomy of the heart, and the presenters include myself, Savita, along with Meredith and Belle. So, what is your heart? Well, it is a muscular organ that is about the size of your fist. The purpose of your heart is to bump, pump blood throughout the circulatory system of your body. It also provides the essential oxygen and nutrients your body requires. In fact, your heart will beat about 115,000 times each day. So now we're going to talk about the evolution of the heart. The first heart-like organ appeared in history over 500 million years ago. Starting with frogs, they have a three-chambered heart that also has two atrias and one ventricle. Turtles have evolved in that they have a three-chambered heart as well, but a wall or septum is beginning to form in the single ventricle. This is important because it makes the blood richer in oxygen. So, turtles have a more sophisticated heart in that it makes the blood richer in oxygen than in frogs. Moving on to birds and mammals, they have a fully separated ventricle and a four-chambered heart. So this way, it can ensure low pressure circulation to the lungs and high pressure pumping into the rest of the body. So it seems like as the from frogs going down to humans, which are mammals, um, you can kind of see that the heart is becoming more beneficial to that person and it is starting to do more, which is what evolution is all about. So this really cool diagram shows the different hearts of fishes, amphibians, reptiles, and mammals. So starting with the left side, we're looking at a fish's heart. They have a two-chambered heart, which means it is composed of one atrium and one ventricle. Fishes are actually the only animal on this diagram that has a two-chambered heart, so this is a very unique characteristic that they have. Next up is amphibians. They have a three-chambered heart, which means they have two atriums and one ventricle. Reptiles also have a three-chambered heart, which is the next picture, um, but they possess two atriums and one falsely divided ventricle. So in the diagram above for reptiles, it looks like there's two separate vent ventricles, but it really is only one. Lastly is mammals and birds. They have a four-chambered heart, which consists of two atriums and two ventricles. Crocodiles are the only reptile species to have a four-chambered heart rather than a three-chambered heart, like the rest of the reptiles. Hello everyone, my name is Meredith Herring, so I'm just going to be talking about components of a two-chambered heart. So two-chambered hearts can be found in fishes, both cartilaginous fishes such as sharks and rays, and bony fishes such as trout, tuna, and salmon. So I've inserted a picture of a zebrafish heart on the left, and on the left of the picture you can see the ventricle, which is considered the pumping chamber, and on the right you can see the atrium, which is considered the receiving chamber. At the top you can see the bulbous arteriosus, and this is a pear-shaped chamber which um, maintains that there is continuous blood flow into the gill arches. So now looking at the picture on the right, I'm going to explain to you how blood circulates in a fish. So looking at the right, the top right of the picture where the atria is, blood enters the atrium after circulating through the fish, leaving it poorly oxygenated. So that's why the blood is blue here. The blood is then pumped into the ventricle, and then from the ventricle the blood passes onto the gills where it becomes oxygenated. So that's why the blood is red here. Blood is then circulated throughout the fish before beginning the circuit again. So a fish heart is considered a single circuit heart because blood only passes through the heart once in a circulation. Now I'm going to be talking to you about the components of a three-chambered heart. 
So amphibians, such as frogs and toads, have a three-chambered heart, consisting of two atriums and one ventricle. This type of heart is more ideal for the needs of amphibians who could absorb oxygen through their skin when moist. Most reptiles also have a three-chambered heart, except for crocodiles, who have a four-chambered heart. And this is an ad adaptation to um, most of their life cycle being performed in the water, and this helps them to reduce oxygen loss when they're underwater. So just looking at how this cycle works, looking at the picture on the left and at the top where the lungs are, the oxygenated blood from the lungs goes through the left atrium. And then at the same time, at the bottom, the deoxygenated blood from the body goes to the right atrium. Both of the atriums empty into the ventricle where the oxygenated blood and the deoxygenated blood gets mixed together. So that's why it's purple here on the bottom. Amphibians only have three chamber hearts because they have a lower metabolism and they require less oxygen. So these type of hearts aren't as efficient as a four chambered heart because um, they don't need to have such an efficient heart because mammals need more oxygen. As well, frogs can breathe through their skin so they have that advantage as well. So now looking at the components of a four chambered heart, four chambered hearts can be found in birds, mammals, and now you know crocodiles. So a four chambered heart is considered a more efficient heart and it prevents the oxygen rich blood from mixing with the oxygen poor blood and therefore ensures a more efficient circulation. So you can see in the picture there's only blue blood or there's red blood. There isn't any mixing of blood. So a four chambered heart is also considered a closed system and it ensures that all the blood passing through is oxygenated. So this type of heart has four chambers and has two atriums and two ventricles. So the right atrium, um, looking at the left, it receives the oxygen poor blood from the body and pumps it to the right ventricle. The right ventricle then pumps the oxygen poor blood to the lungs. The left atrium receives the oxygen rich blood from the lungs and pumps it to the left ventricle. The left ventricle then pumps the oxygen rich blood to the body. And that's how we get all the nutrients and everything that our body requires. As well, this heart has four different valves. So the four valves of the heart allow blood into the heart and prevent it from flowing in the wrong direction. The valves open or close each time the heart beats. This ensures the body always has a sufficient blood supply and blood is moving as it should. So I thought it would be cool to include a picture of a blue whale heart because they do have the largest heart compared to all species of animals because we've been talking about different types of hearts and different types of species. So, so this picture just kind of shows you how um, much hearts can vary, especially in size. So this picture on the left is a replicate of a blue whale heart. I think it's in a museum and you can see that it's really large compared to these five people in the picture. So a blue whale's heart is about five feet long, four feet wide, and five feet tall, and it weighs about 400 pounds, whereas a human heart weighs about half a pound. Um, the heart rate for a whale beats at about eight to 10 beats per minute, and a human heart when resting ranges from 60 to 100 beats per minute. So our heart definitely beats a lot faster than Wells. And you can even hear a blue Wells heart from over two, two miles away. So that's pretty loud. Um, and then the picture on the right just shows you a size comparison of a blue well. So you can see that it's really big. So blue wells are typically about 82 to 105 feet long. And you can see in the center bottom of the picture, that's in comparison to a human. So you can see that we're really small compared to blue wells. And I think there's even a school bus on there. And there's just like a whole bunch of a different, like really cool comparisons on there. Hi everyone, I'm Belle and I will be showing y'all a DIY activity that y'all can do from home. For this activity, the materials you will need are three cups, two balloons, two regular straws, one bendy straw, red food coloring, scissors, tape, and water. From this activity, you can see that the water, which represents blood, is moving in one direction from the left to right cup. To begin the heart pump model, mix red food coloring and water. Once you're done mixing, place the water aside so you can use it later. Now cut the neck of two balloons and tape the end of the balloons closed. Cut 
cut a small slit in the neck of each balloon below the tape. Then insert a regular straw into the slit of one balloon. Cut the bendy straw to where there's about one and a half inches on both sides of the bend, then cut the other regular straw in half. Tape the bendy straw in between the two half length straws. Then insert the end of the straw into the neck of the balloon that was set aside. Now you will pour the red water into the left and middle cups. Next, cut two small slits near the top of one of the balloons you cut earlier. Insert the bendy straw into the slit. Then stretch the balloon over the top of the middle cup. Once the balloon is tight over the cup, insert the other straw. Position the other end of the bendy straw into the cup filled with water. Now the model is complete, push down on the balloon and watch what happens. To help understand what's happening in this activity, here's a photo of the model. The chambers of the heart are represented by the two cups on the left. The left cup represents the atrium and the middle cup represents the ventricle. The middle cup is covered by a balloon which acts as a pump for the ventricle to push blood out of the heart into the body. The body is represented by the cup on the right. Each chamber has an exit door called a valve which prevents the backflow of blood. In the model, the balloon necks that were attached to the end of the straws act as the heart valves. Fun fact, the beating sound your heart makes is caused by the opening and closing of its valves.